Hi everyone, welcome to Shimmer Girl Talks. I am doing another video based on a an interview that Dr. Umar did. And as I said in a previous video, I am a fan of Dr. Umar. I admire him. But um, there are a lot of things that I don't agree with him on. And I'm just going to touch on a few things that he said that I would just like to challenge. And when I say challenge, you know, he's the professional and all of that. But, you know, this is my channel and it kind of ties into what my channel is about, you know, as far as um, black women and responsibility, accountability, marriage and stuff like that. So um, Dr. Umar, once again, is blaming professional, upwardly mobile black men who, who's, who's done it right who may be married or maybe don't have children out here. It's like he wants to put the burden on those types of men to come into the neighborhoods to save the women who choose dubious types of men to have their children with. Now, if the stats are correct, they're saying that 16% of the black males in America are the ones that a lot of these black women are repeatedly having their children with. And there are at least two videos online right now. You have one, it's a man that's got seven baby mamas and he basically, you know, if I find a video, I'll post it. Everything that I'm talking about, I'm going to try to post. And he basically said, I know I'm a raggedy dude. But these women still are coming to me for me to impregnate them. Then you have another man who has 23 baby mamas, either 22 baby mamas and, you know, like 46 children or something like that. You know, I had a woman and I've mentioned her a couple of times um, in a previous video who blasted me because you have so many women out here who want to solely blame men for their predicament. And as I've been saying for many decades, many times over, over the years online and stuff, when women decide I'm not going to be a baby mama, I'm going to be a wife, then a mother, this would change. You have women out here and you have men who are supporting these women and their bad decisions. Dr. Umar, Steve Harvey, Derek Jackson, and there are a few other men out here who basically support women in their bad decisions. And before I go further into my video, with Dr. Umar, he's not going to lose credibility with me, but... For him to say what he said in that interview, to absolve women. Oh, wait, first of all, he wants to call, he said he, he's going to call all black women queens no matter what they do. Black women are already used to being called queens. They could be twerking, they could be half naked, they could be all kinds of ratchets, and they're still going to be called a queen. That's why I don't call myself a queen. You will never, ever, ever hear me call myself a queen because... I'm not associating with that. So Dr. Umar said, it's basically, and I've already done a short and I've done another video. He's basically telling black women, hey, black ladies, you can have your four kids by Pookie and Ray Ray and Mookie and all of them and Chad and Brad and Mike and, and whoever is gonna come in and give you his protection and his provision. And he's gonna... Um, Take your son under his wing and see. And here's the thing, young men. If you're one of these upwardly mobile, moving along in life types of men that Dr. Umar is saying, go in and save these ratchet women. And I'm not saying all single mothers are ratchet, but talking about this for, like I said, for at least two decades now, you for this to still be happening Women, black women are making conscious, a conscious effort to be baby mamas. And so what I wanted to tell you young men just now, 
while y'all are doing the right thing and Dr. Umar is saying you go in and you try to save a, a single mother um, with her son or blah, 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 she's still going to be sleeping with that Pookie and that Ray Ray and being irresponsible with him. And what I don't understand is why Dr. Umar does not challenge these Pookies and the Ray Rays to stand up. I know that, okay, I'm just, I'm just talking because as I've said on my videos before, I don't really talk to men. My whole platform is to talk to young ladies so they don't end up in, you know, the situations of being single mothers. We should not still be having this, this conversation, particularly when so many black women say how we're the most educated and I already know that we're the most enrolled, but you have black women talking about how they're the most educated, the most independent, not needing a man, marriage is not a goal. And Dr. Umar wants men to go in and try to, to deal with that. You can't try to save people from themselves. You have a lot of women who already feel entitled you're seeing videos about women taking, going on dates and taking their children with them. And the men are being taken aback like, okay, well, why, why are the kids here? You know, we're on a date or whatever. That's a sense of entitlement. And a lot of these children do not have to come into being the way so many black women are having these kids. And I've already done a video on that. You know, what a lot of black a lot of never married mothers don't tell you. And a lot of it is irresponsibility that they don't want to be held accountable for. And so that's why I'm having an issue with Dr. Umar and the way he's going after the men who want to do it right. Because to me, it's not their responsibility unless they want to go into these neighborhoods and try to save, you know, these males and these women and stuff like that. And that could be dangerous even for them. Because a lot of these women could potentially set up these decent guys. You know, I'm just going into this neighborhood to help out and this, that, and the other. And the whoever she's sleeping with could be unhinged or anything. And you could find yourself and your life in jeopardy. My thing is, let the Pookies and the Ray Rays step up to the plate. That's my opinion. Let them step up to the plate of responsibility. Let a former Pookie and a Ray Ray come forward and be mentors for these men. Because for Dr. Umar to be a psychologist and to completely absolve women of all accountability, now he might say that he's not, but when you watch his videos, he's absolving women of their, he doesn't want to challenge the women. Now, he might come forward and say, well, it's not my responsibility as a man to talk to the women. The women should talk to the women. I do talk to the women. And, and I do have some women who, who are hearing what I'm saying. And the thing is, much like Dr. Umar, like I said, I admire him. I listen to a lot of what he says and everything. I don't agree 100% with him. And there are some women who watch me who may not agree 100% with me. You don't have to agree 100%. You know, I just like to give food for thought. I want to try to save women from going through a life of drudgery if they don't have to. You don't have to be a baby mama. Make yourself valuable to a man so that he can see, okay, that's a woman I want to put my name on and I want to take her off the market. Valuable in that way. And it's another video that I could do, you know, because a lot of black women think that their value to a man is how much money she makes, the job she has, how many degrees she has, um, her $2,000 wigs and stuff like that. Men don't care about that. And I remember years ago watching Sanford and Son. I still watch Sanford and Son if I happen to catch it. And Lamont called Grady a dirty old man. And he was like, well, I'll be a, a clean old man when I'm a dead old man or something like that. 
And but anyway, Grady has said women did, be, women belonged in the kitchen, barefoot and pregnant, barefoot, buck naked and pregnant, or was pregnant or something like that. And that's when Lamont said, "You're a dirty old man." But let me tell you something, ladies. A lot of men still feel that way. And that sounds, in today's world, it sounds very sexist. It sounds very archaic. But as I've said in other videos, the core value of who men are has not changed. Men have simply adapted to what women want today. Women today want to be modern, modern-minded. They want to have high body counts. They want to go into a high value marriage with three kids by three different men, all kinds of different stuff. And men, you, you hear a lot of women saying, why can't men be like the men from my grandfather's day or even my father's day? Deep down inside, a lot of men are. But something that I said years ago, the reason why men are challenging women now, which is why there's an issue now. But I remember saying years ago online, one reason why men are not stepping up and saying anything, because if they do, they're not getting the panties. That is one reason why men remain quiet for so long, because they knew if they were talking like a Kevin Samuels or um, holding women accountable in any way, they weren't going to get the panty draws. And that's a fact. And I said that years ago. So you have, you know, a lot of these, like I said, the Dr. Umars, the Derek Jacksons, the Stephen Harveys, pandering to women because it lines their pockets. Pandering to women because it keeps heat off of them. Somebody like Kevin Samuels, he didn't mind the heat. He took it head on. And the thing is, the very women who bashed the late, great Kevin Samuels, if he would have looked their way, they would have, they would have had, they would have, I'm trying to keep the language clean, but you know, he was a nice looking man, et cetera, et cetera. And there was something else that I wanted to say in regards to Dr. Umar and being a psychologist. He reads people for a living. So that makes his argument to me disingenuous because you're saying all of this things, these things to men as he should because he is a man and he's still making women victims in a sense. And a lot of these women are not victims. But let me tell you something that Dr. Umar does if you haven't noticed. One thing that he does is he talks about his love of all black women of every shape and size and every complexion. Now, in every shape, shape and size, in every complexion, you have women who get no, who are not noticed by men at all. And so you have Dr. Umar, um, you are a queen. I don't care if you're a petite size zero or 400 pounds. I love you. I love you anyway. That is feeding into women's sensibilities. And... The, the thing about us as women, we just want to hear like the good things and, you know, we don't want to hear really anything that's going to help us to grow and go for, further. All of this pandering, all of all that is doing for women is keeping women in a repeat cycle of either singleness, a, children and no husband and there's something else that I want to say about um, what Dr. Umar said, you know, talking about individualism. And I touched on this in a previous video, talking about, you know, black men in building a community. I don't know. In today's society, you almost have to be an individual. You really can't be in the village that Dr. Umar is talking about, because in that village, you have people who will victimize you. They feel victimized. They don't want to move forward in their life. So they see you doing better than them 
you're coming in to help out them in their community. Next thing you know, you're being knocked in your head and robbed. Your car's being stolen. And I, and I mentioned that in a previous video about when I said my brother, you know, he was going into like a pretty bad area to help out, feed people and came back out and the tools or whatever on his truck were stolen. So you have a segment of people in our community who don't want help. They don't want solutions. They might, they might want help like in a financial way, give them money, but then they still have the same mindset. In order for our community, in my opinion, to move forward would be bringing back the nuclear family, a husband, wife, then having their children, living in a community of husbands, wives, and their children. Then that's where you can have your village of people looking out for each other. But it's hard to be a village. You're doing everything right that you're supposed to do in your home, associating with like-minded people. Then you go into the hood or less, um, or poorer areas or something like that. And next thing you know, you're being set up to be robbed. And you know, all, all the things that goes along with that. And I'm speaking in generalized terms because just because people, some people are poor does not mean that they're criminals. I'm not saying that. So I don't want anybody saying you're vilifying people that can't, you know, you know, make it in life or, what, or whatever. But one thing, one reason why I try to talk to the younger ladies in particular, and I've said this before, you don't have to be a single mother. There are so many ills that comes along with being a never married mother. You have a lot of women in our communities that had their first kid at 17. By the time they're 21, they're on their third child and by different men. And we need to squash that. So I just wanted to bring that up. Oh, and that was something else that Dr. Umar said. Now, you know how he cannot stand the snow bunny crisis. Okay, that's his opinion. Snow bunny, snow puppy crisis, whatever. But he was talking more so about black men who are straying away from the race to get with a snow bunny or non-black woman. And so my thing to that is, if every black man in America who is with a non-black woman were to just leave her and maybe the children that he had with her, black women still are not going to be getting married because the few black men who are with non-black women, they are not the reason why black women are not getting married. And this is going to be triggering and I don't care. Black women are the reason why black women aren't being married. And I've already done videos on that. I'll touch on it just a little bit um, here. First of all, black women will shame other black women for wanting marriage. You don't have to believe me. Just go on various um, forums on like either Twitter or Facebook. And if it's a marriage thread that comes up, look at how many women say marriage is not a goal. Marriage is not a cure-all. I ain't pressed to be married. Only broken um, black itches who have nothing going for themselves want marriage. Um, you're a pick me. You're a mammy. Black women have all of this language against marriage. So even if there were a hundred eligible black men who were ready to make a woman his wife, if he's not whatever so many black women deem as husband worthy material. And by that, I mean, maybe he's short, maybe he's corny. You know, he's not the sagging. I've heard a lot of black women want Tupac in a suit. I don't know what that means. I've never been a Tupac fan. He's got some good songs. He got a couple of good songs, but I have heard that a lot of black women want Tupac in a suit. So you have, you know, a lot of black men that a lot of black women think are safe, corny, steady, stable. They don't want that. They want excitement. 
They want somebody that's going to curl their toes and throw them down in the bedroom. And those types of men can do that too. But I guess it's an aesthetic thing. I don't know. But I hope you made it this far in my video. And if I rambled on a little bit, I'm sorry. But please like, share, subscribe, and tell me your thoughts. Do you agree with Dr. Umar? And I will post the link in my description box. Bye. Talk to you later.